Let's explore Nebula and the Triangulum Galaxy and see just how deep the science rabbit hole can go. Welcome to SETI Astro. So this will be a little bit different video. Normally, uh, you know, I kind of show you the raw images I've taken and then what palettes I chose and just some quick touches on some of the interesting things I found. This time, I think I want to focus more on looking for those interesting things. So I do have about 56 hours worth of data on Triangulum. We got LRGB here. And then I also took a full suite of hydrogen, oxygen, and sulfur because Triangulum because Triangulum is just packed full of nebulosity. And that's really what I want to explore today. We'll look, we'll look at how nice the picture looks, but in the end, I want to show you guys how deep down the rabbit hole you can go in your astrophotographs. Just really explore. Now, if you've never taken narrowband data on galaxies, I highly encourage it. Even if you don't think there's anything there, at least take some hydrogen data. You never know what you're going to find. In fact, that's making some of the most striking images in the last couple of years as people doing deep exposures and narrow band on just random galaxies and seeing what's there but if you've never done a triangulum it's perfect perfect time of the season it's just full of nebulosity take narrow band data on galaxies here's the continuum subtracted data for hydrogen oxygen and sulfur there's very little sulfur but that's that's to be expected right sulfur's not the most prevalent out there and if you've watched any of these from me you know i never settle on one palette this is actually a blend of forax and hos uh just to get some really nice coloration in there and here's the the full triangulum just in emission nebula then and it is just crazy to look at so again take narrowband data of galaxies you never know what you're going to find just just full of of so much just so much and that's what i want to explore in here and show you guys how to kind of go down the rabbit hole combining that uh narrow band continuum subtracted 4x hos palette with the lrgb data you know gave me the just this breathtaking view of triangulum and just so much to go down and explore in here and let's uh let's do one more comparison look here first and then we'll get into what I've posted on Astrobin and how you can do some of this yourself as well. Now, a couple of years ago now, I did shoot Triangulum with my five inch Acro, full LRGB HSO, just like I did uh, now, but I really wanted to get a lot more detail with the, the 10 inch Newt. Specifically, it's this gal or this nebula here uh, that always just intrigued me. If you flip it around, it, it looked like a smiley face to me, like a cosmic smiley face. So I thought that was cool. And I was really curious to see what uh, more resolution would how more resolution would affect how this actually looked from the five inch acro to the 10 inch newt I've tried to line them up here the best I can with uh, Scale, uh, but you, you could absolutely see so much more Detail now that you get from twice the aperture, right? I, I would expect that but this is just gonna kick off the Rabbit hole that that we're gonna go down. So let's let's take a look at everything and let's go exploring a little bit Putting it in what's in my image, you know, quickly allows you to do things like just just circle that and see what we can get from it. Down at the bottom is going to have all the catalog entries and everything for it over here. We have stars in there. We have the emission nebula, just just all sorts of stuff. But we want to narrow this down a little bit. If we run this full bore on the entire galaxy, um, we're just going to get tens of thousands of entries, right? It's, it's just going to be too much. So if we want to explore a particular target, we absolutely could do that. And we'll get back to this target here in a bit, but let's go ahead and show you how to narrow down your options a little bit so you can try to tackle a galaxy's worth of emission nebula and stuff and, and get you a starting point. The first thing I would recommend is clicking advanced search. And over on the right hand side, you have all the different types now. Narrow it down to what type of object you're looking for. I'm going to toggle them all off click nebula and then over here you're going to see h2 ionized regions that's what we want those are those are the emission nebulas so let's just search the entire image for those ionized regions all right so just in hydrogen so just in the h2 ionized regions there's 507 items and you probably can't see it on youtube but the galaxy is just dotted with with little dots all over the place so at this point you absolutely can just click save collage of objects 
but it's going to put the 507 objects in there and I'm going to show you why they, that might not be the best for your image yet. So here's the full collage and if you zoom in you're going to see like the same objects RVP 2013-98, LHK 27-370, NRW83. They have the same object listed multiple times in multiple different ways in different catalogs which is kind of frustrating. It's, it's fairly annoying that there's no standardization and that everybody that made a new paper gets their own kind of catalog designation. So we need to pare down what, what's in my image is getting us to, to kind of consolidate what we're looking for here. So at the bottom down here, there's show annotation tools. You can click that and now we get more options. You could also click on the name. And when you do that, now it's gonna organize everything essentially by all these different catalogs so we can see what we want to, to work with here. And I would recommend, at least for Triangulum, finding one that has a lot of information. So the RVP 2013 catalog has diameters. It, it's pretty, it seems pretty full. There's probably, you know, at least, at least 99 objects in there. So let's go ahead and isolate down on the RVP catalog. Now what you can do is click, and then if you hold shift and press the up arrows, you could highlight a whole bunch of these all at once. And then you can click delete selected objects and now deleted those out of the list and now we can go ahead and do the same down here we'll click below the rvp catalog we'll shift arrow everything else we'll delete those as well so now we're left with just 56 images in the rvp catalog and now if we do save collage of objects you're going to end up getting a much more usable list of nebula and stuff in your galaxy for your collage that you could actually, you know, show people. And then it has unique items in each, uh, in each image as to what the nebula actually are. And that smiley face over there was the RVP 2013 99 is, is in that catalog. The other thing you may want to do is run it full open. So toggle all, pull everything that may be in this image into our object list and we'll just say search entire image. Now this search may take a while. Anytime you search an entire image, it's gonna take a while, but especially on a popular galaxy like Triangulum. So you're just gonna to have to let that run and populate as it fetches all the data from the different online databases. All right, now I hope you can see that the, the galaxy is just completely dotted now and there's 9,600 items. Uh, but you may want to do a, a 3D distance plot of all this stuff. I'm going to change the, the height aspect ratio to a 1, but I'm going to leave everything else on default uh, and just click OK. And when you run the 3D plot on 9,600 items like that, it just looks like a big blobby mess. And you really don't know what's going on. Specifically, everything between 10 to the 3rd and like 10 to the 5th, this is just all in the Milky Way stuff. So this huge blob right in the middle is just Milky Way stuff. And maybe you want to look at that stuff, maybe you don't. It's just all foreground objects. I'm more interested in Triangulum itself. So I'm going to show you how to rerun this plot so we really only get the Triangulum stuff and can really see what's going on with that galaxy. So just click uh, 3D distance model again. This time though, we want a custom min max range so let's go from five to eight let's go from six to eight for the z-axis and but maybe we really want to include these really really distant quasars too so maybe we want to go from like six to eleven so let's do that six to eleven let's also do legend color instead of image based and we'll just click okay and you actually don't have to save the plot you can if you want i i could you could just click cancel plot is much more manageable and it shows us some really interesting things here with triangulum so this is all extra galactic stuff so this this is triangulum and then the stuff at the top here are quasars that are really far away you know like 20 billion light years away is, is way up there but you can see that triangulum itself is tilted so in this case remember closer to us is further down on the graph so the stuff over here is actually closer to us than the stuff on this side of the galaxy. So when we're looking at the galaxy, this half is actually tilted towards us and this half is tilted away from us. And you could easily see that 
in the distance data now. You could actually start seeing the true 3D shapes and how they're oriented to us, which I think is just it's just amazing. You know, this is how Triangulum actually is oriented to us, the you know, to us here on Earth. You can see the tilt of this galaxy itself. Another fun thing, maybe you really are interested in a lot of the stellar stuff instead of the emission stuff. If you click HR diagram, it's going to go ahead and pull all the stellar data it can and develop an HR diagram plot for us. And this is all the stars it has in the catalog for it with the correct B minus V and sizes and all sorts of stuff. If you've never used the HR diagram tool in SETI S Suite Pro, it is pretty amazing. There's even like constant radii for stars listed. And again, you can just mouse over everything and just see what's going on with it. There's even this really, really big star up here uh, with an absolute magnitude of negative eight. Truly just a beast of a star. And with all my stuff, if you just click any of this, it's going to open up the Simbad entry for it and uh, pull up the data for you. So that's what we're going to use next to springboard our deep dive into the science in your image. Let's go back to this little nebula that I've always been curious about. So again, I'm just going to query Simbad just, just around here. We get all the, the familiar items that were listed in there. But I want to double click this row, RVP 2013-99. Again, that, and again, that's going to take us to the Simbad entry for it. And you can even look over here. Look, here's, here's the little, uh, here's our little nebula that we were uh, looking at over there. And to do a deeper dive on this particular object, down at the bottom, there's identifiers. And you can click that RVP 2013 or whatever catalog you're looking at, right? And in Simbad, there's always going to be some kind of a reference. I'm also going to click that reference. This is the actual paper where this is coming from. And you can click full paper on a lot of these. And it's going to take you to where that actual paper is. Now, I want to go ahead and click the PDF. I want to see the whole thing. And here it is, the spectral energy distributions of the H2 regions and M33. The RVP comes from the last name of the first three authors here, R, V, and P. And just, you know, this is, this is the whole paper from it. This is the actual science from that catalog and what they were trying to do and look at. And I know from our list, our particular item is RVP 99, which is down here. It's classified as a, a clear shell in their particular paper. They also have tables of fluxes for various emissions for them all. So again, here's 99. We have the fluxes in UV, hydrogen, alpha, and then all these different wavelength passes as well. So that's that's kind of interesting as well. But something I found really cool is it also has the dust properties of these nebula. So that smiley face, number 99 here, has a, an approximate temperature of just 23 degrees Kelvin, so really cold, but crazily, the mass, the dust mass of that nebula is 2,250 solar masses. So, I mean, that's, that's just a cool number. This is, this is some of the stuff you can actually explore in your images if you just keep digging down into something from what's in my image, taking you over to like Simbad. From Simbad, you could actually find the actual scientific papers on these objects and just read up on some of the cool cool stuff about them. So, you know, now I know the actual temperature and the mass of this thing that, you know, I, I wouldn't have had but before. And now similarly, if we click search mast database, this is going to look at the archive for all the space-based observatories that we have. And sure enough, you know, they've they've taken some images of this. We have some information from multiple space-based telescopes. Tess Hubble, Galex, SDSS. So the best thing to do here, it doesn't matter really which one it is, just double click any of these and it's gonna open up the MAST website for us now. The right hand side is a big image of the area with all the different survey images all across it, lots and lots of survey images. And you can click these various ones. So this box right here was actually shot from Hubble and we can get this data. 
So here's the different band passes it did it in. It did some UV and optical. It did some other uh, science passes as well. So I think we should just go ahead and download one of these and, and check it out. And, and that's what's great about the Mass website. You could actually download this stuff and see what, see what Hubble saw. So I'm just gonna click the little save button. It's gonna go ahead and save it for me. I have it downloaded. And if you've never worked with Hubble data, a lot of the time it's just going to be a single FITS file that has all the information in it. And there's gonna be a lot of information in this FITS. So let's go ahead and open that in SETI Astro Suite Pro. And opening Hubble data, you're gonna see a bunch of stuff. So if there's any science tables, uh, SETI Astro Suite Pro is gonna open those science tables for you. You're probably gonna find some calibration frames, like this white one's a calibration frame. This one here is just completely black. It's, it's a calibration frame as well. And then you'll actually get the, the science data here. So one kind of before and after the calibration. And, uh, you know, these aren't particularly great Hubble uh, images, but uh, this, is, this is what you get out of Hubble. These are exactly the kind of images you would uh, expect to see from the science data from it. And that is how you could use mass to actually pull some of the space-based stuff. If it has it, if you can get the Spitzer Space Telescope, that has a lot of great infrared stuff. James Webb will be on here if there's James Webb of it yet. Uh, but there's tons of Hubble data, so you more than likely are going to be able to find Hubble data. It's all this Hubble Space Telescope, HST stuff. And, you know, some of it may not be very uh, striking, but you never know what you're going to find when you pull that space-based telescope data as well. It's just another piece of science that you can go digging into. One last little bit of science you could try doing is the deep Vizier search. You're going to want small radiuses with that because it pulls a lot of information. And from here, yeah, just... Just double click any of these and it's going to start a cone search right at that spot at that tight radius. And this is NASA's extra galactic database or NED. And this is just another, another thing you can do to drill into targets, see what information there is out there. This has um, different comparative imagery as well. You could open up the Ursa finder chart and in here it allows you a quick view of different filters for, in this case, this has some DSS data. It doesn't look like the SDSS data is loading for me right now. I don't, I don't know if there's a problem with that particular database. Uh, the two mass survey, Y survey of these particular objects. So it allows you to actually verify what you see in your image versus maybe what some of these other professional telescopes have seen as well uh, as you're exploring your image in more and more detail. As always, I do have my image uploaded here on Astrobin. It has the mouse over narrowband continuum subtracted 4x palette. I have all my acquisition details here. And, and a quick write-up along with some of these collages. I do have the 3D models. If you click any of these 3D models, it's going to open a new tab and open the model for you to play with. I'll update my website, setash.com, under Galaxies and Clusters. I have my triangulum image in here as well with a mouse over zoomable. You can click and get the 3D interactive distance as well. The mouse over zoomable narrowband continuum subtract data and uh, the, the collage as well. So again, if you've never shot narrowband on galaxies, absolutely do that. You never know what you're going to find. And I hope this inspires you to dig a little deeper in your astrophotos. They're much more than just a pretty picture. Uh, you could actually find out some real science that's been done in the past on them and just learn some more information to, you know, impress your friends if they're into that kind of stuff. Uh, well, anyways, let me know if you guys find some interesting things in any of your images, some cool things you didn't know about before, or even looking at, like, how far away some of these quasars and stuff are. It's all just really interesting, really cool science to be had. Please comment, like, and subscribe.